Hello friends, this is David Fullen, the pastor of the Drakesboro United Methodist Church and Jurgens Chapel United Methodist Church. Uh, it's my pleasure to lead you through our Ash Wednesday edition of Lent for Everyone, Year C, Luke, a daily devotional by our author, N.T. Wright. The reading for today, the larger reading, is Luke 1, verses 1 through 56. The focused reading, which I'll provide for you today, is from Luke 1, 46 through 55. Mary said, My soul declares that the Lord is great. My spirit exults in my Savior, my God. He saw his servant girl in her humility. From now I'll be blessed by all peoples to come. The powerful one, whose name is Holy, has done great things for me. For me, his mercy extends from father to son, from mother to daughter, for those who fear him. Powerful things he has done with his arm. He routed the arrogant through their own cunning. Down from their thrones he hurled the rulers. Up from the earth he raised the humble. The hungry he filled with the fat of the land, but the rich he sent off with nothing to eat. He has rescued his servant Israel, his child, because he remembered his mercy of old, just as he said to our long-ago ancestors, Abraham and his descendants, forever. And that ends the reading of the Word. Think of the last time you badly wanted something to happen and had to be patient. Maybe you were waiting for someone you loved to come home from a long trip. Maybe it was an all-important letter that took forever to arrive. Remember what it felt like day after day to feel your patience getting stretched thin. Sometimes, perhaps hope seemed to run out altogether. Then, one day, it happened. Or rather, the first telltale signs arrived. The plane touched down. The letter with the crucial postmark arrived on the mat. And the celebration began began in your heart and soul, and perhaps in your voice as well. Even before the person appeared, even before you opened the letter, you started to dance inside with joy, relief, excitement. Everything was going to be all right now. Now imagine that waiting going on for hundreds of years through the memory and imagination of a small embattled nation. Put yourself in their shoes. Things have gone from bad to worse. Powerful foreigners have trampled all over us. The world seems upside down with the rich and arrogant always coming out on top. But we've been promised that one day a new world will be born in which everything will be turned the right way up at last and we will be rescued. And the one who has promised us all this is the creator of the world. Surely he can't fail, even if he keeps us waiting. Then one day it happens, or rather it doesn't happen yet, 
but the first telltale sign arrives. A young woman, saying her prayers and keeping the family hope alive, is shocked to get a message. It's happening. It's happening now, and it's happening in and through you. You are going, says the angel, to have a son. Yes, I know there's no human father in sight. He will be God's chosen one to put everything right at last. Mary knows full well that a virgin, which she still is, can't be pregnant. So the small stirrings of new life in her body are the sure sign that the world's creator is doing a new thing. The letter has arrived on the mat. It's time for the celebration to begin. The whole of Luke's gospel is about the way in which the living God has planted in Jesus the seed of that long-awaited hope in the world. It begins with that tiny life in Mary's womb. It continues with Jesus as a young adult planting seeds of hope around Galilee and Jerusalem. It climaxes with Jesus himself being placed in the dark tomb and rising again to launch God's worldwide project of putting the world the right way up. That's the story we are now invited to live inside and make our own. Today, as you read Luke with many other Christians this Lent, come with your hopes and longings, your awareness of the ways in which the world is still out of joint, upside down. You might begin today by thinking about some situations, whether in your own life or far away, where the world is not yet right. Hold them before God in prayer and patience, and then look for the signs of hope around you, the first stirrings of God's new life, and give thanks to God for the way in which he is at work in the world today. There's a long way to go, but the party begins here. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today.